Everybody, welcome to our first series of Dining with Danielle. I'm so excited I can actually see you guys now, because before I couldn't see the comments, and now I can. I want to be able to interact with you during this entire process, so it was really important that I could see what was going on over here. So I'm really excited to have you guys with me tonight. So we will be doing a monthly series where we come on here, and I will be talking to you and teaching you recipes all my delicious eats. I know you see me posting on Facebook and you see me doing all this stuff and you're like, I wanna learn how to do that. And we all start from somewhere, right? So how many of you, drop a comment below, tell me if um, cooking terrifies you with like a ah emoji or drop a link below and tell me if you love it with a thumbs up. I'd love to kind of see right now how many people are into it or just have no idea where to begin. <laughs> awesome. So first things first, when we are getting started in cooking, it's really important that we know what to invite into our kitchen. And we need to understand something too. When you are preparing your kitchen and you're starting to get comfortable in your kitchen, understand this, there is studies that show 65% of the family's time is spent in the kitchen. So what kitchen, you know, I should say, what part of the house should get the most attention and love from you? I'll give you the answer. It should be your kitchen, right? It should be your kitchen because this is where you are gonna spend most of your time. So if you wanna start learning how to cook and getting a passion for food, the first thing you need to do is be passionate about your kitchen. That means getting the right kitchen utensils, the basics. Now I'm talking about the basic utensils, okay? The basic pots and pans. That's what we're about to show you tonight is what you actually need in your kitchen versus what you don't need. I mean, there's so many gadgets out there, right? It's like how many infomercials about this peeler and that peeler. And it, at the end of the day, it's like, oh my gosh, I just need to know what exactly do I really need? So we're gonna go over that tonight. And um, also, if you have added 10 people to this group, there will be a raffle here where I will be raffling off, okay? Be raffling off a copy of this to a winner. All right? So you guys, I hope you're getting excited for that. And let me just mute this here. Awesome. Okay, so let's get started. What's the first thing we really need in our kitchen? First thing is you need to get organized. Anything that you don't use goes on a higher shelf okay or it goes in a storage area anything that you actually use all the time which will be these essentials i'm showing you tonight should be within arm's reach of you okay because think about it. if you have to run over here to get this and over there to get this it's going to be very difficult for you to maneuver around your kitchen so all the things i'm showing you tonight should all be in like a triangle okay so you can reach 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 behind you okay so we create our space all right, so I think the first thing we'll talk about tonight's knives. Knives are really, really important because we need our knives to prep. So really at the end of the day, there's three knives that are essential to your kitchen, okay? The first one is your chef knife. So you guys have all seen this, right? This is called a chef knife. This is what I probably use the most every single day. And like I said, if you guys have questions, don't be afraid to um, drop a question in. I'm gonna keep checking over the comments. But this is your chef knife, okay? As you can see, it has a nice rocking tip. So when you're cutting, you kind of have this nice little rocking motion and you can pretty much slice anything with this. So this is your chef knife you will use majority of the time. Um, the next knife that you will use a lot for precision cutting is a paring knife. So you've got the next size down right here. Um, and you're gonna wanna invest in a nice set of knives Sometimes you could just buy like the block that comes together, but go with the brand, invest the money into a knife because when you have a knife that actually cuts really well, you will never go back to that cheap set of knives ever again because it makes cooking so much easier than really trying to you know, get in there with your hand and you're like, oh my God, my arm is so tired. So try to go with something that is um, a good brand. Like this is, um, I think it's called J.A. Henkel's. I love this knife brand. Um, the other thing you will need is a bread knife. So a bread knife's got the serrated edges. Okay, it's long. It has the serrated edges. This will be something else you're going to want to have um, in your kitchen. Now, there's another knife that I really like too called the Santuki, Santuki, Santuco knife. And it looks like this. Okay, as you can see, this has 
some grooves right here. And it's almost similar use that the chef's knife, but this is actually um, a lot better for when you're actually using, like if you want a little bit more control over your vegetables, this is a lot better for something like that. Um, or you just want a little more control over your food because these groove edges make the actual vegetable stay in place and not shift around so much. So it just gives you a little bit more control. So how many of you have these knives at home? Let me know, drop a link below. Let me know if you guys have these knives. If you don't, you need them, okay? But like I said, if you just go and get that block, the block of knives, all these things are going to be in there, okay? You'll also notice in that block you have shears. You always need these for trimming off fat. If you've got chicken and you wanna trim off the fat, these are amazing to have, okay? So that's the basics over there. And let's see, what should we get into next, guys? I'm thinking we get into, why do we get into pots and pans? Because there's something about pots and pans that really bothers me. And it's funny because um, I never really used to know why I couldn't. Do you ever go to a restaurant and you get those amazing scallops and they're seared really nice on top and they get that crust? But when you try to cook scallops at your own house, they come out like almost boiled. Has that ever happened to you? So some people, when they first start cooking, and I did this, okay, when I was really young, is I would cook everything in a non-stick frying pan. And that's like the worst thing you can do is to cook everything in a non-stick because as you can see, a non-stick is wonderful for eggs or if you, you're cooking something that sticks really easy. But the problem is if you're going to saute on a high heat and you want to brown something, a non-stick's not going to give you that sauteed crisp. What you need is a regular surface pan like this. And I learned this in the restaurant industry because I remember asking my chef back in the day, how do you get that crust? There's two things. One, it can't be non-stick. It has to be a regular, a regular pan just like this. And it has to be on a super high flame with a saute oil in it. So when you drop it, it sizzles. And the heat, which I'll get into in a minute with, with a frying pan, is um, it gets so hot so fast that when you drop it in, it crusts right away, but you're not gonna get that in a nonstick. However, nonstick is necessary because if you try to cook an egg and something like this, you're gonna notice that the egg sticks and you're never going to be able to flip it. And so it is really necessary to have nonstick for certain items that are that can really congeal really easily to the pan. So we'll start off with our frying pan. So it's important again to have a nonstick, okay? with your pans and then also have a regular surface. As I said, when you wanna get that crust, you need to have this. This is going to give you the heat you need on a high flame to get you that crust, that restaurant wall quality sear is going to be on there, okay? Um, then, you know, they also have those combination pans, like they're kind of ceramic-y. Those are really nice too. It actually, sometimes this brand, um, is awesome. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but I can come up with it after. But um, this brand right here is fantastic. I actually can brown on this because it's almost like a ceramic. So these sometimes you can brown well. And you will want to get all different sizes, you know, like get an 8 inch, a 10 inch, and a 12 inch. A lot of times these can companies will come in sets of three. That's all you need. You don't need more than, you just need like one of each. For me, I've got two sizes in my nonstick. I have, um, this one's actually an eight and I have a 10. And then same thing with this, I'll have an eight and a 10 of this, okay? So now you're probably wondering, well, what other types of pans do I need? The other types of pan you'll need besides a frying pan, you'll also need what's called a saute pan. They're not the same. How many of you think, or didn't, don't know the difference between Wine break, everybody, let's have some wine. I'm, I don't see some questions over here, I'm still watching. <laughs> How many of you know the difference between a saute pan and a frying pan? Do you know the difference? Can someone post below? I'm watching, I see all you guys here. Who knows the difference? I'm waiting. All right, I'm gonna tell you the difference. Here's a, here is a saute pan. A saute pan, I can't get the oil off. Look, I saute so, so crazy it won't come off. It has this higher edge, okay? And again, this is not nonstick. 
This is actually um, very, it's got the regular, regular bottom because I want this, I don't want non-stick because remember I want to sear, I want to braise. So this has the higher end, it's a little bit heavier, but the biggest difference is these come with a cover, you usually can cover with a saute pan. So if you're going to sear something or braise it, you want to brown it really fast, flip it, then you want to braise it, you can cover it, okay? And then that's the biggest difference. They also are made for thicker food. So if you want to put a thicker oil in here, like this much, and you want to do some deeper frying, as you can see, it's got the more height over here. So you can go with the deeper frying, whereas a frying pan has a shallower edge. Frying pans are better for flipping, lighter weight um, items like vegetables, um, more lightweight, okay? It does heat fast. This one doesn't heat as fast. This one cools off quicker. The saute pan stays hot a lot longer. So those are the bigger difference. Thicker, bigger items you can cover if you need them to sear, then braise. This is for quick, fast, fast cooking foods like eggs, sauteing vegetables fast, doing a quick flip. That'll have to be another session where we, we teach you how to flip. <laughs> we'll teach you ki uh, kitchen uh, tricks on, a, on one of our other episodes. So those are the big things. And again, when it comes to um, a saute pan, this probably is about, I want to probably say this is about an uh, eight to 10 inch, okay, um, for your saute pan. Honestly, just one is all I've ever needed. I've never needed more than this. And that takes care of those. So I hope you guys are finding this interesting. There's so many, there's no reason to overcrowd your kitchen with every single size pan. You just need small and a big, right? Nonstick regular surface, one saute pan, okay? So let's get into saucepans, all right? Um, we're gonna go into some saucepans here. So saucepan, there's a couple of different sizes I recommend, okay? This is a one quart saucepan. This is great if you wanna saute garlic or you just wanna do a quick little saute. Really, I cook with a lot of garlic because I'm Italian and um, this is really wonderful for something like that, okay? so. A nice small pan is always needed. The next size up here, so that's a one quart. This is a two quart. This is awesome for rice. So if you wanna start cooking rice, this is wonderful. By the way, they all come with covers, okay? So really great for rice. This is perfect size to cook, um, you know, a cup of rice that would serve about four, four-ish people or so, all right? Um, and then this next size up, this is an actual four quart. So this would be great if you're just making like, um, a light red sauce, any type of sauce you want to make. This is really good because you've got enough room in here if you want to uh, make a nice sauce, or even if you're making something that um, just requires a little bit extra space. Maybe you're making two batches of rice. These three sizes are pretty much all that you would need for sauce pans. Now, if you're thinking about a pan more for like meatballs, like you want a nice big soup pot, okay? Um, behind me, I've got, uh, this is about an eight, seven to eight quart pan. So something like this is also always needed. What do we do with something like this? This is for soup, or maybe we're making meatballs and pasta, and you need to have something with like a lot of sauce, or you're making a stew, or you are boiling pasta. Now, a lot of you might say, oh, what about that one that you get the strainer in it? You know what I'm talking about? You know the one that's got the strainer? Um, not necessary. Honestly, guys, we're going to go over those in a minute. Um, colanders and strainers and things like that. It's really not necessary to get the strainer that fits inside. I'll tell you, I bought it. I've never, ever used it, it ever. <laughs> so it's totally not needed. Um, now, the last pot, I always recommend a Dutch oven. Okay, this is like Chris said. Um, this probably is about a seven to eight quart, which is plenty. This is awesome for chilies stews, if you are going to um, make a beef stew and you need it to simmer on low for two hours to, for a nice tender meat, a Dutch oven is key for amazing soft stews or slow cooking. Okay, so you can use, you can definitely buy a slow cooker, but if you don't have a slow cooker, this acts as a slow cooker. Okay, so it's really meant for slowly braising or slow cooking food, okay? They're very heavy, 
but they're amazing. They come in two different sizes. I really like, this is about the seven and a half to eight quart, which I find awesome. At the end of the day, I don't think you'll need anything bigger than a 10 quart, really. I've never, I think I might have used a, a 24 quart when I had like a, maybe 15 people at my house and I was making meatballs for days or like a, a chipino with a lot of seafood. But otherwise, guys, um, not, even, not even needed, okay? So let me just uh, take a peek in here, see how everybody's doing. All right, so we're gonna get into next, let's talk about, talk about kitchen utensils, okay? So kitchen utensils. So how many, things, how many times have you gone to like William and Sonoma and you're like, how, what do I need? What do I need for utensils in my kitchen? All right, so the first thing is you need wooden spoons, okay? A lot of people ask me, why a wooden spoon? Like, why do you have to have a wooden spoon? Why not this? Why not that? I will tell you why. A wooden spoon doesn't heat when you're cooking with it. So if you use a, um, a spoon that's metal, you can actually overcook what you're cooking because it, it actually heats up and you can overheat what you're cooking. So you don't want to change the heat other than the flame. So what you do is a wooden spoon doesn't um, heat up your food more than it needs to be. It doesn't affect your temperature, especially when temperature could be crucial. Okay, so wooden spoon is a must. Grab yourself a couple, a couple different sizes, a big one, a medium, a small. I can't get enough wooden spoons. Um, as you can see, I've got shorter ones. I've got longer ones. Different length wooden spoons are always fantastic and they last forever. So big, big, big fan of that. Um, so how are we all doing in here? I wanna check on everybody here, see how everyone's doing. Everyone doing okay? Yeah? All right, awesome. All right, so next guys, let's talk about spatulas. Two types of spatulas I always recommend, okay? Two types of spatulas, and I'll tell you right here. All right, so here we go. Um, we've got one, this is a more firm spatula. This is for if you're cooking um, something that is heavier that you need to flip. Let's say you have to flip um, something that really requires no bending motion. This is nice and it's, it's, it's thick and it's sturdy. This has a little more bend. Something like this is what you want for a pancake. So if you're making pancakes and you wanna flip them over, you do need the little bends that needs to get underneath the pancakes to flip. So you need one that's a little more bendy and wide, one that's a little more stiff and, and stout. Now you'll, you'll understand as you start to cook, you're gonna, oh, by the way, Curtis Stone, it just came to me. Curtis Stone is the name of this brand that I love so much and his cookware is amazing. So um, Curtis Stone is awesome. And um, this is one of my favorite utensils, like all of his stuff is amazing. So um, the next thing, a slotted spoon. So you're probably saying, what's a slotted spoon? What do you use it for? So you can see a slotted spoon means there's holes in it. So if you're cooking and you need to get something out of a liquid, right, really easily, but you don't want the liquid, you just want the item. Um, this is how it is. The liquid goes through the bottom and you just pick up the item. Okay, so that's a slotted spoon. All right, so those are the most, those are the like really important stuff right there. Okay, so, all right, next. Let's go over some more stuff here. I'm gonna grab this, this baby right here. And then what I'm gonna do at the end, guys, I want you to stay to the end because, wine break, everyone take a sip of wine. Um, I'm gonna go over a bunch of questions at the very, very end because I can't really see all the questions on here, but I'm gonna be able to see them at the very end and I'll go over all of your, your questions, okay? Ah, it's amazing. All right, so let's get into some basics here. As you can see, it doesn't, it's not as much as you think, all right, but it's just enough. All right, so here, I have a potato masher. I personally love this one because it's got, it's curved. It's not, and it's nice because I can really get around the edges. And if you push down, it's great. It's got two, two tiers here. But at the end of the day, if you just have one that's round, the round one at the bottom is good because you can get the edges of your pan. So you're gonna need a mashed potato masher, or if you're gonna mash anything for that matter, this is the way to go, okay? Um, next, a lemon, uh, a lemon squeezer. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not a big fan with the lime, okay? I'm not a big fan of the lime in here. It doesn't work well. I find that I only use the lemon part. So I think you can just get away with just a 
a juice, a, you know, a juice press. Doesn't have to have the lime on it. It'll work okay with either, but always needed. Okay, what else do I get in my goodie basket? Um, soup, you need a ladle. Okay, hope you take notes. Uh, we went over um, slotted spoon already. Okay, um, let's talk about vegetable peelers. So this is the Titan. I feel like I should do a commercial on this thing. I got saw this on an infomercial and I absolutely loved it. And um, this thing is absolutely amazing. So this Titan, like this vegetable peeler, I've gone through a lot of these. If you're going to buy a vegetable peeler, this thing peels like, like an animal, okay? Um, next going in here would be measuring spoons, okay? Measuring spoons are key. Now here's the thing, don't get measuring spoons that are ultra heavy. I know sometimes we, we go into the store and we see like measuring cups that are like, like steel and these heavy steel spoons. One of my biggest tips for cooking is get, get things that are lightweight, even if they don't look as pretty, they're easier to pick up. Like I don't want heavy spoons. These things are so light. Thank you for my mom. Mom, do you recognize these if you're on here? They're light. I, I hate having something heavy, especially if you're going to keep them all together on a ring. It actually gets really annoying when they're really heavy. So go with the lighter things. Same with your measuring cups. Don't go with a super heavy measuring cup. Go with a lighter cup. Trust me, your, your arms will thank you later. Um, now this, this is what I beat my husband with when I'm really mad. Just kidding. Just kidding, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is a, um, this is for tenderizing meat. Um, you may or may not be doing this when you first start cooking, but it's got jaggered edges around it and I set a flat side here, but it's got more, more jaggered edges. So this is for when you want your, if you buy like a big piece of chicken, who wants to have the big whole chicken? Usually you cut it in half, you put it down and you, you, you pound it. You take your angel out on it and you tend to tell you tenderize and make the chicken softer when you're cooking it. So this is a meat tenderizer. Okay. Um, you'll need a can opener. Save yourself from getting the electric can openers. They don't work. They're garbage, they're gimmicky. Just get yourself a nice can opener that, that works. I'm telling you, there's so many gimmicky things out there. Um, you just need the basics, okay? Keep it simple. Tongs, get yourself two pairs of tongs that lock. Okay, locking is key. See, lock, yeah? <laughs> get yourself locking tongs. These are nice, they have a little rubber tip so they don't, um, burn your pan, um, but you can get, just get yourself two pairs, because I do everything with these. I flip. I flip my food. I even take my pasta out. I toss my salad with this. I do everything with tongs. Like, literally, you can probably cook with just tongs for half of everything, okay? Great for mixing, great for flipping. Um, I'll always flip with a tong when I, whenever I can. I'll use a tong for, like, almost everything. So get yourself two pairs. Make sure they lock in place. Because the worst thing is to just have this like flaring all over the place and oil everywhere. And you're like, ah. <laughs> you don't want all that, right? So <laughs> I know it was very dramatic of me, but um, okay. Next is your spatulas. So um, what you want is a small one, okay? And you want a bigger one for smaller items when you're like beating eggs or whipping something, larger one for larger items, right? Pretty easy, okay? Last thing in my bucket of goodies is a wine key, okay? A wine key, simple one. Guys, if you don't know how to open a bottle of wine, I can definitely teach you, all right? Uh, first thing I learned when I was a server in the restaurant industry back when I was like 17, it was how to open a bottle of wine, okay? Wine key, you've got um, your cork, it's got a knife, this is gonna open your, your bottles, okay? So guys, how, how, are you, how are you feeling so far? This is what you need in your top drawer. Is there other things that are going to come along as you start cooking? Yes, there's gonna be things that pop up where you're like, oh, I really wanna get that or this, but these are the basics and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. We're here to talk about the basics, okay? So let's go into a few other things, okay? The next thing we're gonna talk about is colanders. So you're cooking pasta or you um, blanched some vegetables or you need to drain something, okay? I, you need one large colander for larger items, okay? Maybe you're washing vegetables or washing lettuce. You need something large. Then you need something a little bit 
smaller. Let's see, you need to strain something. Like I made elderberry juice the other day and I needed to strain the juice out and the berries. You'll need something a little bit smaller, okay, like this. And then I even have an, another one that's even smaller. This is great for if you're baking dessert and you want to put some powdered sugar in and you want to just have something to go over the dessert. Or if I'm making chicken soup, sometimes soup can get that frothy stuff on the top or maybe you want to just skim the top of something off. Something like this is really nice for that, okay? If you guys are new, by the way, your minds are probably like, right now. <laughs> You're like, this is a lot, Danielle. That's okay. Guess what? The recording's going to stay on this page. You can watch it again, all right? So we'll talk about graders now. When it comes to grading, okay? Um, I like an old-fashioned grader. It's got all the four sides. I told you, I'm very basic in my kitchen. I don't have a lot of crazy gadgets. I really do keep things basic. Um, and then I've got a precision grater. So this is if you want to do lemon zest or um, you want to zest something, you've got a smaller one for zesting, which like, you know, sometimes they say in a little lemon zest, that's what you'd have this for. And this is of course, if you want to grate like vegetables or cheese, if you're making a pizza or you could just buy it already, you know, already done for you. Um, now, the next item, is this necessary? I, I kind of think it is. If you're making salad and you're not eating it right away, and you're meal prepping, this is a salad spinner. Don't waste your time with a teeny tiny one. What's going to happen is you're going to never use it. It's going to take up space like the one I've had for like 20 years. Um, just get yourself a nice big size. What this does is when you wash your lettuce, and all that water collects on it, creating soggy salad if it doesn't get eaten right away. This will take off all the water. And then throughout the week, you can store it in the fridge. It'll still be crunchy the next day. Okay. So, so there you go with that. Okay. Now, let's talk about um, the oven. Let's talk about baking. Okay. Um, let's see who everyone's doing in here. I'm dying to see who everyone's going in here. All right. Cool. So, we're going to talk about baking. So. First thing is don't judge me. I need a new pair of, I really need a new pair of mitts. Lots of different types of mitts. There's the old fashioned ones. There's some that are made of this like rubbery material. I, I honestly don't even know what this material is, but it does work. I haven't burnt myself yet, but you'll need a nice pair of mitts, okay? And we'll talk about pans. So this is a roasting pan, okay? Something you will need. A roasting pan, this is when you want to roast um, a like a beef tenderloin or roast chicken or turkey, you need something that has this grated, um, this grate at the bottom, because what that does is it lifts up that big piece of meat just a little bit off the fluid, you know, off the liquid so it can cook evenly and, and it can get crisp around all sides. So you'll need a nice roasting pan, okay, when you're starting to do roast. I know roast can be intimidating, but let me just tell you something. Roasts are probably one of the easiest things to make for a large crowd because you just need one piece and, and cook that one piece and it serves like 10 people. Just don't mess it up because then you'll have nothing to serve them. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I, that's the only downfall. Um, but a one, wonderful, you will need a roast pan. Okay, um, secondly, let's talk about a broiler. Okay, some of you would say, how do you broil something? This is a broiler, it comes with most ovens. Now a broiler has got the top, okay, it looks like this. And then in the bottom, I always line mine with, um, it's a little trick, I will line this with uh, aluminum foil because when it, all the juices drip, um, you don't have to clean that up, you can just throw it away. But here's the purpose of a broil pan, guys. Let's say you're making salmon. I'm gonna give you a really good tip on salmon. Now instead of baking salmon, you can broil it. Broiling is when you turn on the broiler and a flame will go across the top of your stove, depending on what kind of stove. And it will almost like, I don't want to say charcoal it, but it, it gives it a crust, that crunchy crust. But it, the heat is so high that the juices need to kind of fall off to create the crispness. So the juices will fall in between those grates below, leaving you with that crispy top because baking, it won't, the heat's not high enough. But it will make a mess because it's high and the juices have to splash somewhere so they go to the bottom of the pan. And if you have tin foil at the bottom of this, you could just roll it up and throw it away and super easy for cleanup. But 
Whenever you're cooking fish, okay, if you're cooking haddock or salmon or cod or chicken and you want to bake it, if you, or let's say potatoes, okay, you've baked them for 45 minutes, but they're just still like they're not crispy. Put it on broil for about five minutes and you'll get a nice crust on top of your food that's just awesome. And that's when people say, I don't know what it is about this, but it's just so good. It's that small little trick at the end. And this is a great pan to do it in, okay? Um, next, what's great to have for um, baking in the oven is a, a lasagna pan. I'll call it my lasagna pan. But really, this is just like a nice big baking pan. You can do anything in this. Uh, potatoes. You can really, really, this is for like casseroles, lasagnas, anything that needs to be layered. Um, but sometimes I'll even do like chopped potatoes in here. But I'm going to show you something even easier if you want to roast vegetables, because this is a little bit on the heavy side, not going to lie. Um, but let's go over here and kind of continue with, with our baking. And so we'll kind of keep going on here. So here's my baking, my baking essentials, okay? I know that um, you might be saying, what do I need for baking? I'll get to that in a second. All right, so the last thing, two more things I want to go over with, uh, with cooking, and then we're going to go right into baking, like fleece and stuff. So sheet pan, okay? This is not the prettiest thing because I've used it so many times, but this is a sheet pan. You're probably going to want about three of them. This is what you want to put your vegetables on. If you want to roast vegetables or roast potatoes or anything, sheet pans are where it's at. You drizzle it, you can put them in, and it really spreads the food out evenly so that everything gets cooked. Because when you crowd your food on your pan, what happens is, it doesn't it doesn't cook evenly some get crispy some don't you'll notice sometimes you can't even get your food too crisp because it's overcrowded so a nice big sheet pan gives everybody room to breathe if you want to put it in that type of terms okay so you're going to want a few sheet pans okay and um lastly you know we didn't go over a grill pan so i'm going to go ahead and touch on that really fast so a grill pan let's say you don't have a grill outside you can get yourself a grill pan. And I, I actually like the ones that have a press on top, okay? And it has the, the grill on the bottom so you can actually put, you know, if you have this on a high flame and you don't have a grill outside, you've got this like these serrated edges that will give it the outside grill effect without having to go outside. And if you like to make paninis or presses or grilled cheeses for your kids, I love the press because it really does um, make make a nice nice press if you want to push something down like a panini or something like that. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll, let's get into some baking. All right, guys. How about we take a little wine break? You guys want to take a little wine break? How's that feel? Who wants to have a little cheers of wine with me? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and and let's just do a quick sip together. Oh my God. What are you guys drinking for wine tonight? Pop a comment below and let me know. I'd like to know what you guys have them. You guys having a good time so far? All right, good. Awesome. All right, so look at all these comments. I can't wait to get to all those in a little bit. All right, guys, so let's talk about baking. Ready? Here's what you need. Super, super easy here. Now, when you guys are baking, you're going to want a loaf pan, okay? Just a simple loaf pan. This is for banana bread, um, any type of loaf that you want to make, zucchini bread, a loaf pan, okay? The next size is, I call it my brownie pan. It's just a nine by nine square, okay? This is if you're making like brown, perfect for brownies, okay? Or a small lasagna can go in here. Now, remember I showed you that giant lasagna pan back there? You could also make that the next size up. This is a 13 by nine, okay? You could even do a lasagna in here as well. And you can also, um, any type of casserole can go in here. You don't really need that big, actually, that big heavy one I show you there. I sometimes make really thick lasagnas, like eggplant and stuff, so I'll use something like that. But this is even fine for something like that as well. And then, of course, you've got your, your cupcake. There's also a muffin one you can have. It's like six of them for muffins. But I prefer mini muffins over giant muffins. Actually, I'm going to tell you to buy this one, and I'll tell you why. Um, your muffins, portion control. We don't want to eat giant muffins anyway. This is better for your portion control, and you can make little mini quiches in here. So I prefer to get just something like that. 
And then lastly, you will need um, some cookie sheets, okay? A couple of cookie sheets. A lot of times you can buy a complete kit. They come all together. Everything all kind of comes in like your basic kit. It'll even come with um, usually two of these for your for cake, if you're gonna make cake. But can I tell you something cool about these? If you're making cake, this comes off and the bottom actually comes off of these so the cake doesn't get stuck inside. Um, so this is a really cool, a cool little trick if you want to make um, cake. They're a little bit larger than the standard size, but I do like that they can pop right out and they don't get stuck in the bottom. So you will need maybe a couple of these if, you're, if you think you'll ever make a cake for somebody. Uh, but again, this will all come in one big, big lump, big lump uh, thing for you if you're going to go buy it. Usually it comes as a set. So let's remove this over and let's talk a little bit more about um, baking, okay? So let's talk about measuring cups. Drop an emoji below. How many of you use the same measuring cup for solids and liquids? Tell me, be honest. Be honest with me. Okay, let's chat, ladies. If you just told me you use the same one, you get a chat, okay? So here's the deal. You got liquid. You've got non-liquid, okay? Measuring cups. Are these my favorite? They're not. Remember I told you not to buy heavy measuring cups? These are way too heavy. I invested in them, and now I'm stuck with them. Get yourself a lightweight, okay? They come in all different sizes, a fourth, a third, a half a cup, and a cup. Okay, so these are for flour, rice, solids, okay? You're set for solids. They'll come as a set. Get yourself something lightweight that doesn't weigh a lot. These are heavy and I hate them. I'm gonna be honest with you. Get <laughs> yourself some lightweights, okay? And then you will need a smaller measuring cup for liquid and a larger one. I love the large one because sometimes it calls for like four cups and I just use this one thing. Sometimes it just calls for a cup and I don't wanna use this big thing. So one of each is perfect when you're doing your measuring, okay? So um, we'll talk about mixing bowls too. You know, unless, drop my stash on the floor, unless you are doing like cooking shows, like, like I'm doing, I'll tell you something, you know the set of measuring bowls, they're clear, and they have every single size all the way up, do you guys know what I'm talking about? I, I never used those ones, up until recently when I was doing cooking shows um, on TV, and unless you are literally going to put everything out out the line with most of you are not going to do you don't need that all you need is a set of three mixing bowls i recommend something that has rubber on the outside why so it doesn't slide when you're cooking you're not like yeah <laughs> it's like running away from you you know you you want something that that stays okay i love plastic it's got a little spout so if i need to pour my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients a lot of recipes are going to say that especially with baking, you're gonna have your dry mix and your wet mix. It's gonna say, pour your wet mix into your dry mix. You've got a little spout that you can pour it right in. These are just basic plastics. This came as a set, large, medium, and small mixing bowls. I use these for everything, like everything, okay? And then of course, um, lastly, you'll need your, um, your spatula. I think I called my whisk a spatula early, and if I did, I apologize. Whisk, you know, I think I did do that. <laughs> you guys probably caught it. That's okay. We're all friends. We all make mistakes. All right. So we're going to put that back over here. And um, let's see what else we've got here. So we've gone over a lot. Okay. I think we have a few, a few more things to go over. And then I'm going to start answering questions from everybody. Okay. So I didn't know if I was going to introduce what's behind me today, but I decided to do it anyway. So kitchen appliances, right? Small appliances, what do you need? Uh, what's really necessary? So I didn't start using a mixer or a food processor well until I started really getting into cooking. Um, in fact, I heard of them, I never used them. So I was a little unsure to introduce those to you tonight as it is an introductory course, but I am going to show it to you anyway. So um, let's take this processor, it's heavy. It's a heavy one. So this is my big bad Larry, okay? 
food processor. I'm going to show you something else, though. I use this one a lot, though, too. It's small. So what is a food processor for? Okay, what a food processor is, now this one's got three cup sizes. Can I be totally honest? I've never used the giant one. I've only used the, like, the small one on top and the medium one. But you've got this blade inside, okay? You have this blade. It's inside, and this is great for if you're pureeing something or you're making something that, like I made homemade peanut butter the other night. This is wonderful for something like that because you can put the peanut butter in and you can whip it, something a blender really can't do. Will a blender do what a food processor can do? For the most part, the difference is this will have the power a blender won't when it needs to be, when it, something needs to be ultra smooth or thick. Okay, so if you're making like a peanut butter or something like that. Now you can go with a smaller one, okay? Um, like this is great. If you're making, a, if you're trying to make baby foods, um, these smaller ones are wonderful if you just want to chop an onion. So if you just don't want to chop, you, not, you want something ultra, ultra like diced, really small diced, that's what these are for. They have the blade inside. You chop up your vegetables, you put them in, you pulse it, and within seconds you've got these little pieces of carrots and little pieces of celery without you really having to go crazy with your knife, especially if you're not a skilled chopper, you might say, you know what, I'd rather just put it in the food processor and let that do it for me. Okay, so when it comes to processors, really, I would just say if I had to recommend anything, just get yourself a medium size. I don't think I needed a big jambasa, honestly. I think I would have been totally fine with like one size down from this would have been perfect. But I got this and I've had it for years, and so it is what it is. All right, let's talk about a mixer. And I, guys, we're probably going to wrap this up, and I'm going to start to answer some questions after this. So a mixer. What's a mixer for? It's for baking or making something that um, really requires strength. Um, I don't really use this often, except if I'm making a dough, okay, or I'm making something that requires it to be I, like it's hard for me to do. For example, if I make the Scotties, it's got this awesome paddle. I cannot mix the Scotty um, batter with my hands. It's so tough. So this is really good if you if you need something that needs ultra whipping. Like if you have a handheld, they have handheld mixers. Some of you have probably seen those. I'll grab that for you. But a handheld, most of you have seen. Okay, um, they look like this, right? This is a handheld, you put this inside, okay? And you can, you can hand blend, okay? But this is for something that requires something to be whipped for a lot longer, and, and you don't wanna stand there like this for 10 minutes, okay? That's when something like this is great, or if you're making dough, like I said, or you're mixing a batter that's just really hard to do by hand, okay? So, so that covers, guys, that covers our essentials. So tonight what you learned is the basics of what you really need in your kitchen to really start mastering, um, you know, how to really cook. So I'm going to come over here. I'm actually going to grab my computer. I'm going to bring it closer to me so I can, I can see you guys. And I'm taking you with me. I want to see the comments below and I want to talk to you. Okay, so let's, um, let's chat uh, Q&A right now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to. I am going to open up my group here and talk to you guys, and let's talk about about everything that uh, went on tonight. All right, so let's see. Here we go. All right. All right, everybody. Let me just scroll down here. And so let's see, let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let's see, I've had some questions in here before. Okay. All right, guys. Anyone have any questions at all? I saw a bunch of comments. I can't see them right now on here. Let me try this again. Let's see. Let's Oh, here we go. There's all the comments. I knew I had a bunch. All right, so let's take a look at all these comments. And, okay, let's see, let's see. All right, thank you, Sasha. Isabel, thank you. Yes, the peanut butter is so good. 
<laughs> cooking pan brands. Yes, that's such a great question. So guys, all clad is my favorite. So if there's any brand that I love the most, it's all clad. So if you are interested in knowing what brand all clad by far, they last the longest. Um, I've never had any issues with them and they really heat up so amazing. So I would definitely say that would be um, definitely my favorite without a doubt. Any other questions, you guys? Ask away. Let's see who else I got here. Brands, nonstick brand. Uh, nonstick brand, still all clad. I still love all clad, still my favorite brand. I buy both nonstick and actually, I have to say, um, I do love Curtis Stone too. I did mention that Curtis Stone, which my mom actually got me this, Curtis Stone was awesome. Definitely a great brand there as well. Yep, I would say Curtis, Curtis Stone, but he's, that's hard to find because that is actually a, um, we got that on an infomercial, so not as, not as easy to get. Yeah, but I would say all clad for both. What other questions do you guys have? Awesome, you guys. Well, I could see there's a couple more on here, but I can't really see everything for some reason. They're not all popping up, even though I can, it says it is 36 comments. It's not showing me all of them. Um, oh, mixing bowls, plastic or glass. So um, go with plastic. They're lighter. Um, so the one thing I was saying before is lighter is just, is, is so much better. But with the glass are heavy, you guys, and when you store them away, it's, it's hard to, to pick them up like I said you can go as lighter as you can but like I said if you're going to get plastic just make sure there's a non-stick on the bottom of them so that they don't slide but definitely go with plastic like I said the lighter you can get with everything the better for sure yeah absolutely anything else guys I wish I could see the other comments I don't know why I can't see them I can go through these afterwards too and take a peek any other questions QVC, oh, QVC for Curtis Stone pans. Yeah, that's where my mom got them. Do you put your baking pans in the dishwasher? Um, I do not. I wash those by hand. And I then, you know, it's funny. I have a rule about the dishwasher and I, I'm constantly, <laughs> Isabel, I'm constantly talking to Steve about this. Um, he's my husband, guys, for those that don't know. So um, anything that's awkward, don't put it in the dishwasher. Like it, it, like pots and pans, they don't really, they just don't fit well. Um, I would just wash any big, big items other than like your regular dishes and, and your utensils. I would just wash those by hand because a lot of times they're going to have really sticky stuff on them too that won't come off. So I would just wash those by hand. Could you put them in the dishwasher? Uh, I would, I think your pots and pans, I would always wash those by hand, um, especially all clad. Sometimes those can get ruined in the dishwasher. So just stick to cups and plates in your dishwasher and silverware, wash all those big items by hand to sure. Yeah. Lots <laughs> of fun dishwasher plates. <laughs> yes, if it doesn't, Paul, if you're listening, if it doesn't fit in the dishwasher, don't put it in. If it's awkward, don't take up five rows with this weird shaped dish if it doesn't fit. So only regular dishes, only regular bowls. Uh, Steve likes to put this like, like my weird, don't put Tupperware in there either because Tupperware will break, it will crack, and it's awkward. It takes up like space of eight dishes. It drives me crazy. Um, knife sharpener, questions about knife sharpeners. Um, I do have a knife sharpener, um, and it's an electric one. Um, but a lot of the knife kits will come with a basic knife sharpener on it. And if you're just starting off, You'll probably be okay with that, but we could talk about knife sharpeners in my next episode with um, Chef Eric Borgatis, who is the executive chef at my um, former restaurant. We're going to go into um, how to ch professionally chop vegetables and, in next month's episode. So I will have the knife cutter and his, his opinion on knife cutters in that next episode, but totally. Yeah, I know, Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, yeah, seriously. I know you got me with that whole dishwasher thing. Oh, gosh. So come on, guys. Give me any other questions. I see some more people still on here. Ask away. How did you feel about tonight? What, what did you learn 
that um, was most interesting to you? If you're if you've been cooking for ages, you probably knew all this stuff, and you're like, I already know all this stuff. But if you're kind of new here um, to you know learning your way around the kitchen, what did you what did you enjoy most about tonight, or what did you find most interesting? I should say. Well, I hope you guys, I think the most, the most interesting thing for me was learning the difference between nonstick and, and regular pan when it comes to sauteing. That was my biggest thing when I was younger. I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get my food to not get that restaurant quality sear. I just couldn't figure it out until uh, uh, a chef had told me that I worked for in a restaurant. I was like, ah, I had that like aha moment where I was like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, you guys. So listen, feel free. Paul wants to know when you'll be doing live cooking. So um, next month it will be, uh, we're going to be working on, it will be actually, you know what we'll do? We will start to do some live cooking next week. It's going to be um, learning how to chop your vegetables and, and prep like a pro, like a professional chef. So I will be giving you items to grab ahead of time like an onion and vegetables. So we'll give you items to chop and practice with us. Like, you know, when you see people on TV and they're like, they're like their fingers are all tucked in nice. And you're like, oh, I want to cut like that. Um, I'm going to teach you how to cut. I'm not going to teach you, but my chef's going to teach us how to cut like that. And um, so we'll have you guys grab different vegetables and things like that so that um, you can practice while you're watching and not chop off your fingers though. We don't want, we don't want that happening. <laughs> So it's going to be a good time. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, you're so in. I really, you know what I, you know what I should have featured, actually? Um, not a utensil so much, but since Isabel's on here and Paul, guys, electric salt and pepper shaker, okay? I got these from Isabel and Paul Bonacci. They're life-changing. However, tonight wasn't my spiel on spices, but... I will say the salt and pepper grinder, if you touch the top, it comes right out. Totally key. This is totally like magic. But I didn't do spices tonight. That'll be a different episode. I'm probably going to sneak in um, an episode on spices, um, maybe in between the, the other one. But we'll talk about that. But thank you, Benacci, for my amazing uh, tools here. This is probably like one of the funnest things I own because everything else is pretty basic. This is like the coolest thing I own, definitely by far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my mom says that she loves hers too. Uh, Paul will be sending you, oh, approved oven gloves. Oh, that would be so cool. Fire Department New York approved fire gloves. Please, I have the mo I am so pathetic. So my son made me this one, right? It's got, he actually has his handprints on it, so it's ultra special. But I don't even know where this came from. I think this came from my husband's collection or something but it does work but I know I put I cook so much that I put holes in all my gloves so easily that I have to just constantly buy new ones but this one's always gonna be saved because I've got Giorgio's handprint on it from when he was in kindergarten I got it from Mother's Day <laughs> oh gosh what else guys I'm here I'm all yours what other questions do you have I know I feel bad I feel like I missed some questions earlier I'll have to go back and and answer them. I know that I'm live right now, so the certain questions I can't see till I till I post this. But I got we got 50 questions to answer afterwards. I will definitely get on here. Oh, you guys, thank you. Already ordered. You guys are insane. Always spoiling me. Uh, anything else, guys? You have fun tonight. Yeah. Can you talk about temp to cook salmon? So, um, yeah, you know what's interesting? Um, when it comes to salmon, if you're doing salmon fillets or just fish in general, if you're doing a fillet of fish, usually 20 minutes is enough to cook your salmon. Um, I've never actually taken the temperature of my salmon. I usually do that with meat. But um, salmon overall, usually you only need about 20 minutes. And you can tell when fish is ready because it looks flaky. It starts to get a little flaky. Um, I like mine, my salmon um, flaky and not, not rare. So I usually, um, 
cook it about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how big the piece is. So if you have just a fillet, if you could buy the fillets of them, 20 minutes is fine. Um, if you like it really well done, 25 minutes. If you've got a big piece, like a two pound uh, piece of salmon, you're welcome, Dina. Um, it, you know, if you got it like a two pound piece of salmon, you usually need about 30 minutes or so. Uh, but you can tell by when it gets a little bit a little bit flaky. But that's the overall rule with fish is I, I've always just gone on time versus um, like a temperature for meat. But we can definitely do um, maybe an episode on on temperatures if you guys want to do that on the next one. But yeah, you're welcome. So glad, um, Dean, I'm so glad you had a nice time tonight. And I hope that was super helpful for you guys. Um, but yeah, what other questions do you guys have? Definitely, oh, you know what we did talk about? You know what slipped out of here? My meat thermometer. I put it away. Guys, I totally had this out. So I'm glad you actually asked the question. So a meat thermometer, we didn't really talk about this tonight, but a meat thermometer is key without a doubt. Okay. So the meat thermometer is something you're going to want. There's so many types these days, guys. I feel like I'm a little bit, um, there's meat thermometers that you don't even have to take out of the oven. You can like put them in the meat and it, the temperature is like comes out of the oven. So you can actually see, see the temperature without having to open your oven door, which is pretty awesome. Because every time you open the door, you're messing up with the temperature. But um, I just have an old school thermometer. I told you I'm kind of boring with, with how I cook. It's the basics tonight. So yeah, meat thermometer, it will be key. Thanks for reminding me. I don't know how I forgot this one tonight. But a meat thermometer is, um, is always key. You always are guaranteed a good piece of meat. And take it out. Take your meat out, whatever temperature you decide to have your meat. Like if you could just go online literally and say, hey, what's the temperature for, you know, um, like medium rare or medium, just take it out like a few degrees before you actually want it, like three degrees before you actually really want it to be. Because as it sets the 10 minutes, um, it'll go up three more degrees. Usually three is um, is good to three before is usually good to do. Yeah, I know. I feel like I could go up. I could kind of go up a little bit more as I meet thermometer as well. I agree with you, Isabel, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The royal tip for cooking salmon is key. Everyone that gets my, my salmon recipe is like, I never broiled my salmon before. It was like life changing. And it really is. I broil it. Or like I said, you can bake it, bake it for 15 minutes and broil it for five. Um, that also will do the trick too. Um, yeah. But we can go into more of that stuff. Like when we start to cook more stuff together, we will start going into cooking, cooking, um, where I'll give you the recipe ahead of time and we'll cook together um, for sure. We'll start to do stuff like that in the future without a doubt. Yeah. All right, everybody. Um, thank you so much for being with me tonight. It's 930. Okay, we've been on here for an hour and I'm sure you guys are tired. So I'm going to let you go. I really enjoyed your company. Thank you so much for being on here with me. And um, have a fantastic, fantastic rest of the week. I hope you found this helpful. And I'll be posting in here where we are going to have the next episode, okay? Take care, guys. Have a good night. And thank you so much for being here with me. It meant the world for you to take time out of your busy schedule to be here with me. So have a great night. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Happy cooking.